Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a quick review of the Zen Art Supplies Moderno watercolors. This is their uh, from their Virtuoso, or their Artist's Grade line of paint. Zen Art Supplies came out with brushes a couple of years ago, and um, I purchased some off Amazon uh, because I had a really big cat's tongue brush, and they were pretty decent. I mean, for the price, I think they were pretty decent. They weren't the best brushes in the world, but they certainly were, were good for the price. And then I noticed last year they started to come out with watercolor palettes, and um, one caught my eye, uh, which I reviewed in a different, a different review, and... Um, and then when I contacted the company to ask about the different palettes, they offered me some other ones to review. So uh, let's take a look here. We've got this in a, and I've already done some paintings with this. So I actually filmed an unboxing with all three palettes that I got. Um, and if you guys want to see that, let me know. I could post it. But it, the unboxing was so long that I'm like, I think I'll just separate it and do three different um, different reviews. So this is what the tin looks like. It's white. It's red on the bottom. It's got your typical thumb hole and um, this is embossed and printed and then this is actually a sticker and it's probably because they have like four different sets of paints here and if we look at the um, the paper that comes with it, it has a little thank you and a customer service um, you know 100% quality guarantee type thing if you look at the brochure here I'll zoom out just a little bit. You get a color palette with pigment information for all of their four uh, Virtuoso tin sets of 12. And I just thought the Moderno palette looked like it would have more of, um, of kind of like a good split primary color palette and it would just be a little bit more useful than the others. Although I think this one over here, the Ceriso palette looks nice too um, because you have some colors looks like they would be really nice for like plein air and also for like life sketching and stuff so um so I don't know but I just thought overall that one would be the most useful and it would give me a good idea about how the paints would work and I could um I could paint a variety of subjects and see how they worked for me and then on the back there's some information about the other products like that I think that's the brush set that I bought although I think when I got it, it was a five piece set but anyway um I just got some information about the company and uh and other products that they sell. So taking a look here, these all came individually wrapped, came with a swatch card that you could fill out, which is really handy. Generally, I mean, I like to swatch on my own paper to get a good feel for it, but just for a little color chart, because a lot of times watercolors look different in the pans and they do um, paint it out. Um, you've got 12 half pans, and immediately when I, when I looked at the pans, they had a paper wrapper and then a cellophane wrapper on it, and just like the the uh, kind of the mounded raised texture of the pan, I was like, these look just like my Cotman, my Phoenix, and my um, my Ahimi Rhombus, like the, those pans. It they this the texture, everything just immediately reminded them. So I took out a pan and I looked on the bottom, and it's got the PH on there, and I'm like, I think these are Phoenix made paints. So. Um, Phoenix, the Phoenix company makes a lovely set of half pans. I actually have the full uh, the full set of 48, but I just grabbed the smaller one uh, just to show you so it would fit on camera better. Um, they're a wonderful paint maker. They make very affordable supplies and they do white labeling and private labeling for companies. So when I, um, I tried their tubes over at Ocean State Job Lot and they were like their student grade tubes, they were awful. But their cakes, their round cakes were wonderful, really cheap. And then, um, when I saw these on Amazon, I was like, ooh, I gotta try these out. I'm just so curious about them. Um, so I think the, I bought this set, set for like $16, and then I waited for like a, a Amazon Prime Day sale on the 48 set, and I think I got it for around 26 but it's generally around $40. But anyways, it's got the PH on the bottom, and if we look at the pans, I don't think I have the identical colors. I don't think any of these colors are identical between them, but if I just pull out, this one doesn't look too sticky. <laughs> Uh, you can see the pH on the bottom, um, same pans. Now, Windsor & Newton, I believe Windsor & Newton has Phoenix make their Cotland line of paints. The pans are the exact same shape, but they don't have the pH on the bottom, and Windsor & Newton prints their, um, their pigment, not the pigment information, but their color names and numbers on the pans. Uh, but quality-wise, they seem about the same. Now, I don't think these are the exact same paints. I think they are made by Phoenix. This is just my opinion and my... Um, my hunch, I think Phoenix makes these paints, but they use a different, they're using different pigments on these because the pigments, um, the 45 colors that you can find in the common range are also in the set of, um, I'll just bring up my swatch here, they're also in the set of the 48 Phoenix colors. And I'll 
link that that video. I'll link that review just so if you want more information about these paints. Um, so if I go through and I compare the pigment information and the colors between the full set of 48 Phoenix half pans and my Winsor Newton Cotman 45, because they only have 40, maybe they only have 40 colors. They only have 40 colors in the range. Maybe that's it. They only have 40 colors. Um, then they're identical. They swatch out identically. The pigment numbers are identical. And then they have like eight other colors that are, that have no light fast ratings and the pigments are different than anything that Winsor Newton sells. All of the ones that are the same as Winsor Newton have the same light fast ratings too. So I think that they were probably given a specific recipe to make. And then um, they make those for Winsor Newton. And then, you know, they've, I don't know if they've copied that recipe or what, but uh, their own paints came out to be, you know, identical with just like eight more colors. Now it seems like the colors here in the, and I'm speculating, I just want to clarify, um, these colors here, there are some different colors that are not available in the Phoenix set of 48. So um, let me get that swatch and we can take a look here. So I went through and I compared my swatch of colors here. This is the Zen Art Mard Madarno set. Um, and they use some colors that you would not find. They used like, um, for instance, PY1. You don't see PY1 in any of the, um, in any of the Cotman colors or any of the Phoenix colors that are like the Cotman colors. Um, actually, none of these colors except for the Dioxazine Violet color, the um, Cobalt Blue Hue, and the turquoise blue, those are the only colors that I found matches and pigment matches and like looks matches with the Cotman um, and with the Phoenix. The other ones were were different, like that warm gray. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of opaque like a Davies gray, but definitely has more brown to it. Um, I don't know why they put the both of those colors in there because they're both so similar. I would much rather have had like a hooker's green or a, um, or like a, uh, a sap green or something but if you take one of those colors and you add it to the warmer yellow or you add a little like yellow and a touch of red to it you can get kind of like a sap green color um the earth tones are kind of just a little muddy quite frankly i mean i know earth tones mud you know but i mean like that's that warm gray is really just kind of like um just kind of like a dull opaque sepia color and this uh brown oxide i, I would rather have had like a burnt sienna or a burnt umber or something that's a little more transparent a little bit more um robust and it's got a Payne's Gray. The Payne's Gray is a mixture of black and ultramarine blue. It's um, it's slightly granulating. It's nice. It's fine. Um, but I did find this assortment painted fine. But that's what the colors look like on regular paper. Uh, on the glazing, you can see a little bit of sediment on some of those colors. Um, the light fast ratings, I think, are a little generous on this set. So let's go through and look. Um, so they've got, uh, their scale goes one is good, two is very good, and three is excellent. And we're looking at this set here. They give a uh, mix of PY1 and PY3 good. Now if the PY3, which is the second pigment, not the first, so it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be as much of that in there. I mean, PY3 is, is fairly light fast, but PY1 has not been proven to be that light fast. Um, and then, uh, PR81 Opera Pink. They have that as uh, very good light fastness and Opera is known to be fugitive. And I would imagine there's probably also some dye and there's some fluorescent dye. And um, let's see, how do the other ones look? The warm gray is a mix of PBK9, PR101, P, uh, and then pigments whites five and six, probably to kind of stretch it a little bit. Uh, cobalt blue is ultramarine mixed with white. I mean, that should be fine. Turquoise is thalo blue and thalo green. That should be fine. Um, Thalo Green only has a very good light, fast, light fastness rating and it's PG7 and PG6. I would think that would be a little bit higher actually. And um, Emerald Green is PG7 and PY175 and is only getting a very good, like I would think those would be much higher than Opera personally. Brown Oxide PBR6, that's a single pigment color, although it's kind of muddy for a single pigment color. And then Payne's Gray is PBK7 and PB29, and that's got an excellent light fastness, which I would expect that to be excellent. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just, and I, I, this, this assortment's not too bad. Just the PY1 kind of really, um, in the opera, those seems like those would be like a one and not a two. But anyway, um, let's look at some of the just little examples that I painted with this. Since once I started using it, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do a really long review on this one because it's, I feel like it's just the same paint as I've reviewed before in a couple other iterations. But um, I did a quick little just like loose flower um, painting here. 
And then I did this, uh, this roses, and I do like the way they mix. I didn't really have any mud problems. I was using like both of the reds and some lemon yellow to get my peach tones in here. Um, things reacted well with salt. I was able to make a sappy green color by the phthalo green, new gamboge, and a touch of pyrrole scarlet. So I didn't run into really any issues um, mixing colors. And then when I did my warm and cool mixes, I used the opera, the turquoise, and the Hansi yellow light for my cool colors. And I was able to get um, a really nice purple, really nice green, and a kind of a peach. And then using the warm primaries, I was able to get kind of like that aubergine eggplant type purple, um, uh, just a really gray green, and a really nice orange. So um, mixing was fine. If you like Cotman paints, you'll like these. At the time that I got these, these were going for, I think, $26 was the regular price on Amazon, but there was a $10 off coupon, so it brought it down to about 16, which is what I paid for the Phoenix paint. So um, if you get it on a sale like that, I think it's it's um, it's a decent buy. I don't think I would pay $26 for this. Um, and honestly, I would compare them with cotton, the Cotman palettes because the Cotman palettes do use more tried and true pigments. They use like kind of just a more diluted version of what's in their artist grade paints. So um, if you're concerned with light fastness, for about the same price you can just buy the Cotman paints or even the Phoenix um, the Phoenix paints. But um, Cotman, I don't think they use any dodgy, real dodgy pigment combinations in their Cotman line. The Cotman line, uh, and I have a soft spot in my heart for Cotman because I've been painting with them for so long and I know they're, they have gone down a little bit in quality over the past, you know, since the 90s or so, but still I don't think they're a bad paint. Um, and they're still using decent pigments. So I would probably choose Cotman over these, but as far as in use, they're very, they're very indistinguishable. Um, the tin is really cute. It's a white tin with a red bottom. It's just different. I like different. I kind of collect travel palettes. So having something a little unique is, uh, is fun for me. Um, even the box that the uh, that the paints come in is so very similar to the uh, the Phoenix the Phoenix box. I just uh, I've been saving the cardboard boxes for some of these because if I stack them, um, the metal tins can kind of scratched up and also be kind of slippery. So if I keep them in the tins, they uh, they tend to you know stay a little bit nicer. But yeah, the paperboard is like identical that they're being that they used on these. So um, yeah, I think it's kind of just a, a private labeling situation, but the pigments are different in the in these and art supply sets uh, than the Phoenix and the Cotman sets, but not necessarily in a good way. So I just want to put that out there. But if you like Cotman, if you like the Phoenix sets, if you like the Maya Himi watercolors, and you just want a different assortment of colors, um, then give them a try, because it does seem like there's not a lot of overlap in the colors that they chose for their... Let's get that brochure back out. What did I do with it? I take it back in here. Oh, for goodness sake. Did I seriously lose that already? Oh my gosh, did I? I don't know what I did, I don't know what I did with that. I just had it, just had the paper. Um, I think that the, this is the full Phoenix, so the 48. Um, it just seems like they're using different, either they're using different pigments, but I also didn't really notice a match. So let me go through this whole Phoenix line. I mean, like the, um, I cannot read. The, I think it's lemon yellow hue. I can't read the uh, the tiny printing. I mean, that's similar, but that's um, not the same pigment number. That's PY 175. Um, like this cad yellow hue looks very similar, but I uh, that's I can't read that. Um, but you know what? All the information. I don't know if it's on if it's on Amazon, but it's in their brochure. Um, I mean, yeah, you have some similar colors, but. They're using different pigments for some of them. Like those two look really similar, but they're not the same. They're not the same pigments. I don't know if it's been a situation of maybe pigments have been harder to find. Um, there's no real opera compa uh, compatible color in the Cotman or the um, the Phoenix range. Oh, the violet, pretty simple, pretty similar. There's nothing like that warm gray, cobalt blue hue. Um, actually, it doesn't quite look exactly the same. That's uh, actually Phoenix had a PB28, which is actually a cobalt blue um, in their in their set of 48. That one, yeah, it doesn't quite look as strong as the Cotman ones. The turquoise looks pretty darn close. The, let's see, the phthalo green, pretty close. The emerald looks pretty close. 
Uh, but they are using different pigments. I did check the pigment numbers and they were different. The brown ochre. That's raw umber. There's not exactly, there's not an exact match for that. The Payne's Gray is a different, it has, a, it has a, one more um, color in it in the uh, the Phoenix and the Cotman versions. So yeah, it does seem like the Zen Art Supplies paints are using some different pigments um, that are a little bit less light fast and a little bit less um, common. Like one thing I noticed with their paints is that they use that PO13 a lot and um, especially in their their set, the Nomad set that was made in Korea, this one right, uh, no, I don't have, oh, right here, um, this one right here, that one is one I only see in like Mungio made paints, but I couldn't find any sort of, these don't remind me that much, other than the flow is really good, the texture of the paints, they seem different than the Mungio, because I've used Mungio half pans from Mungio and from other brands, and um, and they're very gritty in texture, but they do flow really well like those paints, but those have a strange odor to them where the Mungios don't. So yeah, it's a, it's a mystery. I cannot figure out what's, what, what Korean paint maker is making those paints for them. But I'm pretty sure that their half their half pan 12 tin sets are made by Phoenix. But I don't think the pigments are quite as good as what you get from Phoenix. So keep that in mind, especially if you're considering buying like a bunch of these smaller tins. I would save some money, save yourself some money and buy the set of 48 um, Phoenix set or buy the set of 45 Cotman set. Just wait till there's a, you know, there's a good deal on them. And just get the format you like you like the best really. But um, I'm always interested in trying new palettes and they offered that up and I thought I would give it a try and uh, and see how they were. So yeah, they were fun to paint with. I didn't have any issues painting with them. If you like Cotman, they're gonna react very, very similarly. And uh, really that's all I have to say about these paints. I think that's, um, I think that's really, oh, there it is. I finally found it back again. We can take a quick look at those pigment numbers and see if anything, um, yeah. And there's also some errors because like they have lemon yellow just PW3, that should be PY3, I'm pretty sure, because um, PY3, uh, that would be a white pigment, and I don't think I've ever heard of PY3, I've heard of PY4 as like an extender, a white chalky extender, uh, like Hensi Yellow Medium, PY1, PO13, that's not a combination I've seen in um, in the other Phoenix products or Cotman, it just seems like it's kind of like a... Um, like a cost cutting measure and these are marketed as artist grade. I mean the price isn't artist grade, the price is what you'd expect to pay for student grade so I don't think they're like um, robbing anybody but I do think that calling them artist grade might be a little bit of a stretch. Um, and like cerulean blue hue like on this one it says PB15 that's got to have white in it. They don't have to disclose white if they use P, uh, pigment white 4 because it's an extender they don't need to disclose it but still you're going to have kind of more of a chalky, um, a chalky feel to it. So yeah, I mean, some of the colors look like they're they're exactly the same as Phoenix as far as pigment wise, but other ones look a little bit strange. Um, so they're probably made custom for this company, but I do believe they're made by Phoenix. You know, that's just my hunch. I'm not a chemist. I don't work for these companies, but that's just what I would guess. So if you already have the uh, the Maya Himis or the Cotmans or the Phoenix, um, you've got very similar paint in your stash already. If you love those and you just want some different colors and you don't really care if they're light fast or not, give it a go, give it a whirl. Um, they're fun to paint with. Anyway, and they're cute, cute little, cute little tins. That's all I have to say about that. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this little review. And until next time, happy crafting.